Migration has often been an inflammatory subject in South Africa where issues are couched in the language of fear instead of the enormous opportunity which the movement of people across the continent and across the world really affords. Migration, like other policy areas, including education, has many positive benefits, but of course it's not without its challenges. And it is important to take legitimate concerns seriously while at the same time addressing xenophobia. South Africa has struggled with incidences of xenophobic sentiment and related prejudice, violence and crime for many years. The cost of xenophobia is high, it puts lives in danger, it stunts economic potential by deterring investment, tourism and cross-border trade, and it also risks making South Africa pariah on the African continent and on the global arena. However, it is critical to engage constructively. Demonizing genuine concerns and fears does risk entrenching negative sentiment and other defensive positions. So the task for any government is to really harness the potential of migration while taking seriously the anxieties of those who feel left behind. Now, this is what we have attempted to do in the, in the policy. Last week, on the 28th of February, the DA's Federal Council met to consider three draft position papers. One of those papers was the party's position on migration. After deliberation, the position was approved. The full policy will be made available on the party's website in the coming weeks. The purpose of today, however, is to communicate on the key proposals adopted, and I will then hand over to Adrian Ruiz, who's the Deputy Shadow Minister of Home Affairs, and also to Dr. Michael Cardo, who is a Shadow Minister of Employment and Labour, to outline the issues, activism and legislation that we will push in the coming weeks and months that are related to migration, particularly in Parliament. The DA's opportunity-focused migration policy is anchored on three pillars. The first pillar is the opportunity created by the freer movement of people, and this would be enabled by safe, transparent and efficient borders, as well as the proper functioning of home affairs. This may sound like a, paradox, like a paradox, but in fact, the freer movement of people does require well-functioning migration systems. Freedom of movement of persons would complement the African continent, continental free trade area, which aims to enhance the free movement of goods and services across the continent. Fear-mongering politicians say that we need to do a better job of keeping people out, but focusing on opportunity would mean that we need to do a better job of enabling people to enter and remain legally. Therefore, this is what we propose on this first pillar. We propose implementing an advanced migration registry system to properly document all migrants when entering or leaving the country. This includes the taking of biometrics and other identification, together with the necessary alert mechanisms which are connected to both domestic and inter international institutions of safety and security, such as SAPS, Interpol and SARS. We would also limit human interaction between applicants and migration officials by ensuring that the bulk of applications, if not their entirety, are completed online. This would reduce the opportunity for soliciting bribes. It is also important to blacklist officials who have been found guilty of involvement in migration corruption and fraud and to prevent them from working for any other state agency or government department. Our proposals also include a hotline for whistleblowers who wish to report cases of fraud, corruption and malpractice. We need to promote and support the implementation of norms and standards with external governments to enforce South Africa's ability to deliver an efficient service. It is possible to enable verification in the workplace. We would explore the feasibility of an e-verification system that would enable employers to check the work eligibility status apologies, of potential employees against a home affairs database. This would really empower employer, employ, employers to be able to check um, the status of their employees. We would also make it compulsory for employers to verify that a prospective employee possesses a valid permit to work in South Africa. This system should also really come with a self-check uh, mechanism that also allows persons to check their own status and to resolve any discrepancies. In other countries, this kind of system um, has proven far more effective than the physical showing of papers. 
A critical proposal is to provide an amnesty period for all undocumented migrants, giving them an opportunity to either return to their home and attempt to re-enter legally without prejudice or to apply for the relevant visa from within South Africa. The national government and South Africans already recognize the principle at play here. A good example is what is happening with driver's licenses. There is currently a grace period for driver's license renewals in recognition of the challenges motorists face and the inefficiencies, corruption and capacity problems at testing centers. You can multiply those problems by some order of magnitude when it comes to home affairs. So why should foreign nationals not be given amnesty when home affairs does not have its act together? Just like driver's licenses, a punitive approach risks lumping the innocent along with those who had no intention of following the rules. All urban refugee reception offices must also be opened and remain fully functional. We also have to increase the number of days asylum seekers have to apply for asylum to at least 14 working days after arrival. The current period is far too short to encourage compliance. The DA also continues to support the non-encampment approach with regards to refugees and asylum seekers. To address child statelessness in particular, we would remove the requirement for a South African citizen to witness the birth and to receive the notes of birth. We would also allow children to supply, to apply for naturalization at the age of 18, where they would have no proof, where they have no proof of birth registration. It is also critical that the Department of Home Affairs proactively work with the Department of Basic Education to address the large numbers of learners without birth registration through increased deployment of mobile units and opening of Home Affairs offices on Saturdays to accommodate school learners. On the matter of border security, we would ensure that the allocation of border security assesses the return on investment. This is important to balance the cost of physical and technological border security measures with interventions in the interior, which are often cheaper and might be more effective. No country can build an, an impenetrable wall, nor should it. So walls cannot take the place of migration systems. In addition, we would explore the return on investment of increasing the number of companies that are deployed along our land borders, as well as to explore the return on investment of maritime patrol, surveillance and enforcing capabilities within the South African Navy. We would task units with repairing and maintaining border fences and also ensure border personnel, border personnel are not only tasked with guarding the border, but assisting and redirecting all persons they encounter to legal entry points. Lastly, we would enter into various cooperative and shared responsibility border protection MOUs and protocols with neighboring countries and other international allies. So let's take care of the elements um, on addressing documentation in our borders. The second pillar is the opportunity created by the economic participation of migrants. The language of fear that is often spread by reckless parties is that foreign migrants compete for public resources and jobs. The language of opportunity is supported by the weight of evidence, and it can help us to communicate that migrants in fact pay rent, they pay taxes, they transfer skills, know-how and knowledge, and they also employ South Africans, as well as purchasing goods and services which contribute to South Africa's revenue. Therefore, to further enhance the economic potential of migration, the DA would commit to introducing a trader's permit or visa for all African countries. Cross-border trade contributes to economic activity, and traders often buy goods to sell back home, or they bring unique goods and crafts that are not readily available in South Africa. While here, they pay rent and they purchase goods and services. Traders from outside South Africa rarely qualify for business permits, and they are often issued visitors' permits. These permits do not allow cross-border traders to participate in street trading in South Africa, so they are always at risk of arrest. More often, it leaves traders vulnerable to corrupt officials who try to solicit bribes. To attract the talent, skills and experience South Africa needs, the DA would move to a points-based skilled migration system, as opposed to a skills demand system. 
A points-based system has proven to be more attractive to aspiring skilled migrants globally. Skills that fall into the South African critical skills list will carry points along with other criteria, such as qualifications, language spoken, work experience, etc. It is necessary to appoint a professional third party to administer the points-based system, ensuring that the progress administered um, is efficient and is done independently according to industry best practice. We would ensure the system is highly transparent to ensure the certainty and integrity of the system, thereby increasing the attractiveness for skilled migrants to apply. Our aim would be to have a turnaround time for the processing of applications of not more than three months. We would also offer permanent residency to high scoring candidates who are exceptional in their endeavor, regardless of whether it falls within the critical skills list. It is essential to update the critical and skills list, scarce skills list based on transparent market intelligence and methodology. This is to ensure that it is easier for industries and individuals to motivate for the inclusion of a skill onto the critical skills list. We would also offer, importantly, automatic allocation of corporate visas for scarce skills as a percentage of the workforce to companies who operate in industries or sectors which experience widespread skill shortages. We would also simplify regulations to make the repatriation of remittances easier, as this, is, as this particular intervention is significant for workers with dependents abroad. Some unscrupulous employers exploit the undocumented status of workers and they rely on the fact that they will not be reported to the CCMA by workers who fear deportation. To address this, and this is only in part, we would ensure that legal status is not reported or investigated as part of any labour dispute process unless it is relevant to the case. This ensures that there are no barriers to foreign nationals accessing the same labour rights as South Africans in order to limit the arbitrage opportunity for exploitative employers. The final pillar of our opportunity-focused policy seeks to address the harmful myths that exist. The language of fear often communicates that foreign nationals increase crime, that they are an economic burden and that they threaten our democracy. Inefficiency and corruption in the system make it extremely difficult for those foreign nationals genuinely attempting to gain legitimate documentation. The proliferation of businesses and criminal syndicates that prey on desperate undocumented migrants also contributes to the association between crime and undocumented migrants, even though many of these migrants may be legal work seekers, asylum seekers or victims of trafficking and exploitative work circumstances. The Institute for Security Studies has found that the vast majority of violent crimes in South Africa are committed by South Africans and not by documented or undocumented migrants. Furthermore, our own parliamentary questions relating uh, to this matter and requesting a breakdown of crimes by nationality show that there is no indication that there is a greater propensity to crime by foreign nationals compared to South Africans. That should put to bed the myth about foreign nationals and crime. On the economy, a 2018 joint study by the OECD and the uh, ILO the International Labour Organization, found that migrant labour contributes significantly to the South African economy and that it has a positive effect on the fiscal balance, in other words, through the payment of income tax and value-added tax that foreign migrants contribute. While there is a generalised fear of foreign nationals accessing social grants, occupying hospital beds and government subsidised housing, the more common reality, in fact, is that for most migrants, it is a life of hardship in accessing services. To compound the problem, most South Africans, such as bank staff, landlords, police officers and municipal officials, have very little understanding of the migrant documents and what they mean. This leads to problems with the police, problems with access to banking, problems with access to social services, and difficulties with landlords and property agents who all expect a South African identity document for most transactions, while migrants often have other forms of legal documentation. Migrants without permanent residence, let alone undocumented migrants, do not have many avenues through which to access public services. 
To qualify for an RDP house, one must meet the National Housing Subsidy Scheme criteria. This means that applicants must be South African citizens. On health care, it is important to know that the South African health care system does not provide adequate health care services to anyone, South African or otherwise. Foreign nationals, however, often struggle to access health care at all. And this is a challenge that needs to be addressed, not just as a humanitarian issue, but in its own right, because migrants live among South Africans. It is difficult to achieve optimal community health outcomes by excluding some members of a community. This is true not only of the management of the COVID pandemic, but other health concerns too. So while legal certainty, certainty and consistency regarding the provision of health care is urgently required, the DA will advocate for the provision of emergency and primary health care services to migrants, including undocumented migrants, as a fundamental human right. This does not mean that all health care services should be free, but payment should be discussed after treatment for emergency and primary health care services. Furthermore, health care facilities should be safe spaces where legal status is not required to be disclosed. And this is supported by many health advocacy groups, including Médecins Sans Frontières. SASA grants are available to citizens and permanent residents only. And the data indicates that foreign-born migrant children represented just 0.3% of the child grants provided by the state. In comparison, as of 2019, some 18 million South Africans received some form of social assistance from the government. But we do realize that these facts alone will not change perceptions. Part of managing sentiment is ensuring that migration is managed in a manner that engenders confidence and trust ensuring that migration is integrated into a broader economic growth and development strategy and that the positive economic and social outcomes of migration are regularly communicated is vital. Also vital is an intergovernmental coordination um, strategy to deal with claims of xenophobia and violence against foreign nationals before flashpoints transform into a humanitarian crisis. Another crucial set of interventions are those aimed at ensuring migrants are more efficiently and effectively integrated into South African society, both economically and socially. Migrants are our brothers and sisters. We cannot have a situation where we are fighting among each other due to a corrupt and incompetent home affairs. We need to make home affairs uncomfortable as it has made migrants and South Africans uncomfortable.